All right. Blood vessels. Let's go through some stuff for blood vessels. All right. Uh, let me just hide my little meeting control thing here. Okay. So we're going to do this whole entire blood vessel lecture in like one chart. Okay. We're not going to do it in one chart, but you can kind of put a lot of things together for blood vessels by doing one large comparison chart. And that's what I'm going to do right here. And then I'm going to kind of pause my video for like arteries and go through some stuff. And then I'll come back and do veins and I'll come back and do capillaries. So the first thing we want to, to do is go through like, you know, what is the function of each of these? Because let's say you're asked to compare and contrast arteries, veins, and capillaries on an exam. I don't know. You can write a giant paragraph or you could just fill in a chart. A chart's a lot easier. Okay, so most people think arteries carry oxygen and nutrients around, but that's not its function. Okay, the function of arteries is to move blood away from the heart. Okay, in order to do this, they need to have specific anatomical features. So actually all, all blood vessels have the same anatomical features or similar anatomical features. That, that we can see in lumen size. Lumen is the opening, okay, the opening. We can see that they have tunicas. These are the layers. They have an, an intima, a media, and an externa. And then here I have special features in case I need room for anything extra. Oh, I forgot. I did actually end up uh, accidentally deleting one of my rows right here. I should say types, okay? So arteries are gonna move blood away from the heart under high pressure. I'm gonna say, so that's one of their special features is they, are, they always work under high pressure. They have a more circular or round lumen that is usually smaller than a vein, okay? The tunica intima, in this case, is epithelial cells. There are epithelial cells across the board. In this case, the tunica media is smooth muscle. And in this case, the smooth muscle is thick. Okay, so you have a much thicker tunica media in um, the arteries. And then our external layer, this is connective tissue on the outside. I'm just gonna abbreviate here as connective tissue, okay? One of the special features, I'm gonna say outside, and here it's it's actually relatively thin. So again, this, this is thin. Tunica media is always thin. Tunica intima is always thin. Tunica media is nice and thick. The external layer, the external layer is usually thin. Arteries always run under high pressure. That high pressure can be regulated because of the tunica media with vasoconstriction. The other special feature is they usually have elastic fibers in all layers. Layers, like that. For the different types of arteries, you want to know that there's elastic arteries. There's muscular. And then there's arterioles. So we go from big to medium to small, okay? Elastic arteries are things like the aorta and the pulmonary trunk because they're under higher pressure, so they definitely need more elastic fibers. Muscular arteries are all the named arteries that, you, that you've learned. And then the arterioles are the smallest ones. They have the thinnest layer of uh, smooth muscle, and that's the artery right before we get to a capillary, okay? So we see our nice arteries, all right? 
So arteries is where we take blood pressure from. In order to take blood pressure, we're going to basically take a uh, blood pressure cuff that inflates with air. We put that around the brachial artery here because the brachial artery is easily accessible and is also at the same level as the heart. So it's um, easy to register correct and accu accurate blood pressure from it. And there's gonna be two values for blood pressure. One is called systolic pressure and the other is diastolic pressure. Okay, so when you inflate the cuff, what ends up happening is you cut off circulation here to the brachial artery. Okay, so basically air cannot flow through. And as that air cannot flow through, what you're gonna end up hearing is you're gonna end up hearing some Kortikoff sounds. Basically, as you deflate the cuff and you start to let air flow, or not air, blood flow a little bit through, you're gonna start to hear this ba boom, 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 which is, is basically the pressure hitting the artery wall. Okay, that's what blood pressure is. Uh. Right. So in systolic pressure, what we're measuring is we're actually measuring the contraction of the left ventricle. And then as we release the pressure in the cuff, eventually you're going to allow continuous blood to flow through uh, the brachial artery and the Kortikoff sounds are going to go away and that's your diastolic pressure. And this tells us the left ventricle relaxation. That's why it's called systolic and diastolic. Systolic is the contraction of the heart and the diastolic is the relaxation of the heart. So whenever you look at blood pressure measurements, it's like 120 over 80 millimeters per mercury pillar. What that tells us is how much pressure is being pushed on the wall of the artery, okay? So 120 is systolic and 80 is the diastolic. And that is basically normal arterial blood pressure. It should, it should be, within the 120 over 80 range. It can be higher, it can be lower, okay? In healthcare, you're also going to do a couple of other things in terms of blood pressure. You can do things like pulse pressure, and pulse pressure takes systolic pressure minus diastolic pressure. So what that is telling us is overall, how forcefully are we, are we um, is our heart working? If you're, if your ventricle is contracting really hard, but you're you're not actually relaxing hard enough, then it can tell us a couple of things about how blood is not maybe exiting the heart all of the way, which is not necessarily a good thing. So this can really help us as a good indicator of cardiovascular health, like is your heart actually healthy? Just because you have high blood pressure doesn't mean you have an unhealthy heart. It could be another number of other reasons why you have high blood pressure. Your, your blood vessels also get old with time, receptors get old with time, and so it's harder to regulate that blood pressure sometimes. So this just helps, 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 us, whoops, helps us understand the heart a little bit better. So if we take this and we just do a quick like pulse pressure here, we'd basically say 120 minus 80, and that's what our pulse pressure is. Or we take 140 minus 100, and it would tell us our pulse pressure. Okay, and basically this is 40 right there. And again, this should be 40, right? Excuse me. So you see how you can have a normal blood pressure of 120 over 80, and you can also have 140 over 100 and your pulse pressure is actually the same. Does that tell us anything about cardiovascular health? It could tell us that yes, your heart is still working properly, with this really weird high blood pressure, but you're still within the normal range, the normal pulse pressure range, so, so you should be okay. But we might put you on some high blood pressure medication all the same, because again, it's we're, we're talking about heart health here to help us, pulse pressure is helping us with heart health, okay? 
The other thing we can look at is called mean arterial pressure. In mean arterial pressure, we are going to use systolic and diastolic pressure, but in this case, we want to know at what force blood is in the capillary. Is there enough force for blood to be moving out of the capillary or not? Because if there's not enough force for blood to move out of the capillary, how do we get nutrients? How do we get oxygen? How do we pick stuff up? We can't because there's not enough push on the, on the capillary wall to move stuff out of the capillary, okay? And that's essentially what mean arterial pressure is gonna tell us. We have to be at 60. 60 is the lowest value of mean arterial pressure that you can have. Below 60 mean arterial pressure, that means you're not getting enough nutrients to the brain, the kidneys, the heart, all of the vital organs. So you have to have a mean arterial pressure of at least 60, okay? You will do this in lab, if you haven't already done this in lab, where you take pulse pressure and mean arterial pressure and kind of look at it and see how it varies based on like different physical activities, okay? So again, here you can see how systolic pressure is gonna be when ventricular ejection occurs, diastolic pressure is after ventricular ejection, blood is now kind of flowing past and through um, the arteries as pressure dips because the heart's no longer contracting anymore. Okay. All right, I'm gonna do how we regulate blood pressure in arteries in a separate like mini video.